Welcoming the Elohim. Yeah, the the planet the Elohim. We talk about the neurogenesis and neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity, uh, you, I will again explain what it is. It's what you do when you meditate. You, you create a network of connection in your brain. From child until now and forever. And it can be very different from one person to another one. More or less, where you are born, we all have almost the same brain. A little difference, but same brain. A lot of neurons, or very, very little connections. And we start to create connection. Like uh, somebody who has a, a block of stone and start sculpting the stone. The stone is your brain. And the, you create the shape of the brain. The difference with stone is that you can change it forever. When Nina creates a sculpture with a stone, oops, when one part is removed, you cannot put it back. The brain, yes. It's a biosculpture. You can remove and add. So when you are a little baby, very few connections. Almost nothing. But then you start to recognize the mother face. And you hear the mother saying, Mama. And one day everybody is happy because you say, Mama. You start. It's simple. The connection in the brain. After Papa. Mama first, always. Why? Because milk. Father gives nothing. <laughs> Mama. More milk. Mama. Intelligent. I say Mama, I have more milk. I say Papa, nothing. So, Papa. <laughs> and slowly, you learn more and more. You learn to walk. The beginning, you don't know, but you fall a lot. And you create connections. Everything you say, do, think, feel, Create connection in the brain. You are creating a network of connection. From baby until you die. And now, right now, you are doing it. You are doing it. Right now. Every word I said, you 
either use a connection of the past because you know already this or create a new one. My goal as your Maitreya, teacher, guide, I have to create new connection. I have to create new connection. So I try to always find a way to make you stop using the old connection. Because the, our body is a beautiful creation of Elohim. But it's the best tool in the universe to save energy. Everybody talks about saving energy, uh, not using too much water, electricity. The body naturally saves energy as much as possible. Our body is made of a body and brain, made of billions of cells. We use it, make it stronger. We don't use it, garbage. You all know that. If you have a broken leg and you go to hospital and after two weeks, three weeks, they remove the cast. the back muscle becomes smaller and smaller. Why? Because we don't use it. The body intelligence says, why keeping this cell? We don't use it. Let's destroy it. And when you go to the toilet, it goes in the pee-pee. Everything we don't use, the body says, why, why giving food and energy to this cell? Let's destroy it. That's for the body. If you stay laying down in the brain, your leg will become smaller and smaller. If you spend three months laying down in a bed, and some people, Toshi Akino in hospital, are a long time in the bed, they cannot walk after. If you stay in a bed laying down for three months, you cannot walk. Your muscle, the bones, become smaller, less bone density. The body says, why keeping it? It doesn't work. So everything you don't use, the body saves energy and says, why keeping it? It's, it's not using it. You understand? For the body. Same for the brain. That's more terrible. That's why people becoming old. The brain is smaller and smaller. Less and less gray matter. Because they don't use the brain. They use very little part. Thinking. And thinking about always the same things. Every thought, you can write it and underline it three times in red.
Every thought is old. I repeat. Every thought is old. Toute pensée est vieille. You cannot have a new thought. When you have a new thought, you think it's old. If you think about the future, it's old. Because you cannot build the future without using the past. Mm. In art, in science, in everything, we are only made of past. Your language, your habits, your taste, what you like to eat or not, all past. How to escape from the past? By being now. So the brain, your brain is full, full of matter, connection. Mama is a connection. What is a connection? Two neurons communicating. There is a kind of a matter coming from your food, and it's not supernatural. Coming from your food of yesterday, you put together atoms and molecules which create, build a connection. From mama to E equal MC2 is the same process. E equal MC2. E equal MC2. It's the same. Mama, Einstein thinking, no difference. Connection. And our brain, loving to save energy, creating new connection. Our brain constantly says, wait a minute, creating new connection requires a lot of energy. Let's use the old one. So you come to a table, one food you know, one food you don't know, Naturally, you will pick the food you know. I come to a table. There is a French cheese. And natto. I will take the cheese. I will say, mmm, this is the past. I, I was like that. Until one day I came to Japan and I said, wait a minute. Why do I choose the cheese? It is past. I try natto. Blech. I said, wait a minute. Why? Blech. This is the past. So I take a little spoon of natto. Not so bad. This is the past. Big meditation. <laughs> Breathing three times. I am not my past. Take a big spoon of natto. I focus my brain on what is good. And then, wow. Delicious. If I didn't reprogram my brain, I will forever 
hate NATO. No, I love it. Because I stop using the past. One Raelian in France, named Jean Pierre, he hates onion. Negi. Negi. Tama Negi. He hates it. Every time we go to a restaurant together, he says, oh, no, no onion. I say, why? Uh, I don't know. Find out why. Oh, my father, when I was young, forced me to eat onion. And when I was not finishing onion in my plate, punished me. This is past. And slowly, he learned to be able to eat onion. Every time you say, I like that, I don't like that, it's not you speaking. It, it's your past. I love blue. Are you sure? Are you sure? Maybe your father and mother gave you always blue things and it's a memory and you continue to love blue. For, for everything, always ask yourself, is it really me? Do I clean my brain of the past now? And really feel. Or I let the past direct my life. Every second of your life, this is happening in your brain. Feel it, even right now. When you came here, you look at other people, especially girls. You look at those dre girls dress and say, oh, this one is cute, this one, no. Oh, beautiful hairstyle. Who is judging? Your, your past. For everything. So, that's where the process of cleaning from the past. Neuroplasticity. Meaning you can change for what you really like. And not choosing what you do or eat or wear because of the past. And all, all the people, the more old you are, the more past you have, of course. Baby and children have very little past. So for them, it's very easy to play with a snail for two hours. But when you age, the garbage bin becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So big that you're inside. Uh, and you know, all the people, ah, oh, it was a good old time. Oh, young people today, they don't know what is to have fun. In my age, in my time when I was young, we had fun. When I was young, the music was good. Today, music is terrible. The good old time. I'm sure there is an expression in Japanese, more accurate. The good old time. It's garbage. <laughs> but more old people 
the more they remember and spend all day thinking about the past. Finally, they spend 100% of their day thinking about the past. What does it mean? It means they use the same connection again and again and again and again. And these connections become big, like a highway, super highway. And the brain, what is the brain thinking? Because the brain say, wait a minute, we use only 50 connections? We have 10 millions. We don't need this connection, he never use it. So the brain eliminate, like eliminate the muscle if you don't work. And you go to the toilet, and you make pee pee, or men like that, you pee your neurons. If you think only about the past, one more time, when you go to the toilet, you pee your neurons. You Bye bye, my brain. You can say it when you go to the toilet. Say bye bye, my brain. Do you have? It's going away. How to keep it? By having new thought. And you know the result of this past thought and rumination. It's called rumination. Rumination is, uh, you know, the cow, they eat something and it comes back in the mouth and they chew a second time. How do you say that in Japanese? The cow, they eat and they come back and chew again. Hansu, great. The Hansu, donc je suis. And c c this is very important to understand that the brain loves ruminating. Uh, rumination, why? The cow, they eat, it goes in the first, they have three stomachs. It goes the first stomach. A few hours later, the same food come back on the shoe again. Can you imagine if we do that? Now you had breakfast two hours ago. Breakfast coming back again. <laughs> eh? That's what you do with your brain. Not with this morning, but with yesterday or ten years ago. When you think about the past, it's that. And that's why old people, they become like vegetable. <laughs> they don't use a brain, so it becomes small. You can see on the brain with a scan of old people some hole, physically. You don't, you don't use it, it goes in pee pee. Do you want to keep your brain? And beside of these people, you have, for example, this Italian scientist a woman. At 99, she graduated from university. Uh, possible? Possible. Canodes. Not Canodesca. Canodes. They kill her. There is no age to say, oh, I'm too old. You're never too old. For anything. But you can be 18 years old and very old in the brain. 18. I met many young people and they are both, both, yeah, both. Oh. Oh. 
and people 80 or 90 years old, like our Chinese friend here, and full of enthusiasm, ready to take an airplane to come to listen to the Maitreya. 83, 85? 80, 84. Yes, yes. Congratulations. <laughs> and many people at her age will say, Boof. going to Okinawa, you, no. let's watch TV. That's what most of the old people do. They watch TV. They walk their dog. No more brain. And other people at 80, 90 go to university, want to learn. Want to enjoy. So, how to keep the brain young? The body age. There's nothing you can do about it. It's genetic. We have a white beard, we lose hair. Women have a beautiful breath. Oh. 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 That's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do. And wrinkle, and the joint become painful. That's aging, which is a privilege, because many people don't age. They die. Aging beautifully is a fantastic experience. I know it. I am. Very happy to age gracefully. I have many health problems, many suffering, many pain, but I manage it. With, with the help of my beloved Dr. Toshiaki. Using science, because science is our religion. But the body will become older and older and damaged, that's sure. But the brain? No. Your brain can be younger and younger and younger. It's you who shape your brain, not the age. One more time. At 40, you can become a vegetable. At 99, you can graduate from university. You choose. The brain can be, I repeat, the brain can be younger and younger. If you use it, if you use it, that's your choice. So, when people ask me, how old are you? I say, I'm 69, my body. But I'm seven years old in my brain and 16 years old here. For, I hope forever. <laughs> the body is aging. This is okay. <laughs> ah, Lotus, it's quite okay. <laughs> Having a young partner is better than Viagra. <laughs> some people, some men come to me and say, I don't understand, I have no more sex feeling. I need to take Viagra. I say, take a young lover, you don't need pill. 
That's true. The hormones. <sighs> I smell hormones of young girl and wow. It's Chinese medicine. It's well known. Mao Zedong was almost dead. The, the doctor sent him two young girls to, to stay with him. And whoo, suddenly he became younger. This is very good. That's, that's very important to feel, to stay young. Hormone about hormone and number one about neurons. People judge so fast. So fast. How can a young girl, 26 years old, enjoy being with a man almost 70? Oh. And people judge so fast. Maitreya, yeah, he likes a young girl only for sex. I like sex. I love laughing. Beauty. Laughing, number one. Dancing. Singing. Everything we do together with Lotus. Sex is okay, but it's not the most important thing. And crying when we watch a video or listen to a poem or music, we cry together. And I love that. Sharing sensitivity. Age doesn't matter. What I love is child brain. I am seven years old here. And Lotus also. Maybe six. Our voice also. And I love. It's so good to be children together. But it happened not only men loving young girl. My good friend Betty Dodson is 85, I think now. She is teaching masturbation to American women. Her boyfriend is 30 years old, 55 years younger. And they're happy together. So people always say, oh, difference of age is terrible. It's here. They have the same age here. This is what is important. Yes, I'm 44 years older than Lotus. This part. But here, we are almost same age. Here also. <laughs> <laughs> That's very important to understand. To keep young, remove all barrier of traditions. Socially, politically correct things. Don't care about other people's judgment. Oh, 95, you are way too old to go to university. Go to a retirement house. No. Go to university at 95 with students and graduate. Oh, 70, you are too old to be with a 20, 28, 25 years old girl. No. Choose what you like. Oh, at 84, you are too old to go to Okinawa to seminar with Maitreya. No. And she takes the airplane. She doesn't care. I'm sure many of her friends say, no, no, it's too long, too old. You are too old to travel. No. <laughs> That's being alive or dead. Yes, many people, they are, they are young, they are 40, 50, 30. 
They are already dead. Wolf. Wolf. No goal. No dream. And that's how to stay young. Now, let's go deeper. Deeper. Inside the brain. The past cannot create new connection. Huh? The past is already there. So the connection of the past, they are there. Good or bad, huh? you remember? That's why in the meditation I say don't remember the past. Good or bad is bad anyway. If you remember, if you enjoy remembering, oh, my mother was making this food, was so good. It's past. So, when you remember the past, you use the same old connection in the brain. When you think about the future, you use the same old connection. How can you make new connections? By being now. When you start to say, now, and there is no now. That's a new connection huh, this year for you. Wow. Maitreya say, there is no now. But we must be now. Your brain is, wow, what's happening? It has no connection for that. You are making a big challenge to your brain. Wait a minute. Maitreya say, happiness is here and now? And there is no here and no now. The brain is lost. <laughs> and then you create new connection. The brain says, wait a minute. And he is looking, because to create new connection, he needs new neurons. And the brain has the ability to create new neurons. It's called neurogenesis. Neurogenesis. Genesis, making neuro neurons. So, Shiaki? Neurogenesis? Sausage? <laughs> So, this is, the, uh, for many, many, many years, scientists say it's not possible to create new neurons. We, we age, we lose neurons. Recently, scientists discovered that we can create new neurons. <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> She's making a photo. <laughs> so, creating new neurons. And I'm not saying two, more. Not two neurons, more. It was just for the photo. I don't know why, why people do that in Japan. Why? I don't understand. France will do that. Here, two. Why not three? I don't. One is good. <laughs> Anyway, creating new neurons. That means for our friend Nina, the sculpture, it's like if the stone was suddenly growing. The dream for a sculpture, to have somebody, a sculptor would be so happy if the stone suddenly grows and there's more matter to work, but it doesn't exist. You have wonderful brain, yes. You can create new neurons. How? By using supraconsciousness to bring you in the now, which doesn't exist. 
So one more time. Maitreya say happiness is here and now and there is no here and no now. So the brain say, wait a minute, I don't have the neuron for that. We need new neuron. Help! And you create it. And you accumulate new matter in your brain to make new connections. It's your choice. Ruminating the past. Again and again. Brains shrink. And it's a big, big connection, but very little number. Or like a firework. More connection. And more neurons. And the beautiful shining brain. You choose. And the tool for that is supraconsciousness. Supraconsciousness, the little snail coming out and feeling. Just feeling. Of course, I gave you the example of, um, of the here and now, and there is no here and now. But this is just a little example. When you let my meditation, supraconsciousness, go out of the shell, the brain is also lost completely. Because your brain is used to only process the past. And creating a future based, based on the past. When you meditate and are completely in the now, in the movement of the now, then the brain has no connection for it. And they start to say, wait a minute, Shutomate. We need new connection. And your brain is becoming younger and younger. You can do that? 10 minutes a day? During the morning meditation? Or all the time? You choose. It's your brain. I would love to be a magician with a magic stick and touch you and boom! I cannot. You can. Each of you, you have the magic stick. Only you can. Boom. Other people cannot. Who decide? Only you. Aging? or at 83, 84, 90, 100, coming to the seminar and still being amazed. Your choice. You are here. You choose to be here. You are in the good way. Because it's necessary to come every year. Every year. Many people here came to the... How many, how many times did you come to my seminar, to meet you? 25 seminar. Who did more than 25? Oh! Huh? You can come forever. Never enough. It's not like uh, going one time, okay, it's enough. No. Same for meditation. Meditation? Some people say, ah, yes, yes, I did it one time. 
every day. It's so completely stupid to say meditation just one time is okay. Every day. You need. The best is, if you are busy, minimum three times a day, 20 minutes. Most important is the wake up meditation. Before lunch, if you can. And before sleeping, if you can. They each have a particularity. The one at the wake up is uh, number one. Asa. Because it's uh, when you wake up, I explained yesterday the process of the brain whoosh, flying. Before lunch, because before eating, you slow down. Instead of you slow down and you look at your food and and feel that you are putting something in the temple. Your body is a temple. A temple celebrating the creation of Elohim. Don't be shy of your body. Even if old, you are all beautiful creation of Elohim. Young girls are beautiful. But Junzo, at his age, is beautiful. And with my beard at my age, I feel beautiful. And our friend from China, 84, is beautiful. We are all beautiful. Look in the mirror. What, whatever your age, you have in your eyes the, the beauty of Elohim. And your body is a temple. You put food in the temple. You know some people put food in temple for God in Asia. This is stupid. The temple is you put food inside. And when you eat Everything you eat. What is it? What is it? It's tomorrow connection in your brain. Tomorrow new connection you will make. How they are made. With the food you eat today. So when I eat a little piece of natto, ah, tomorrow some neuron will be made with this natto. Or otoro, or bibimba, or bulgogi, or Beijing duck. <laughs> Become my brain of tomorrow. My new neurons. I look at my face. Wow, my new neurons. Mm. This is you, the temple. What you eat is your brain of tomorrow. That meditation of lunch is very important. And number three, before sleeping. Before sleeping is the most difficult. Most difficult and very important. Why difficult? Because most of the people are very tired. And when you meditate before sleeping, usually <laughs> you fall asleep. So it's very difficult to meditate before sleeping without sleeping. So I recommend to do this one hour before your sleeping time. Not exactly a sleeping time. If you go to sleep at nine, do this meditation at 8. 
or 7.30. Like that, you have less risk to fall asleep. And it prepares your night. You calm down the brain. So you help your supraconsciousness prepare the cleaning. And you can visualize your future dreams. You can program your dreams. What do you want to dream? You imagine. Me, I love imagining that I fly. So I visualize myself flying. Most beautiful dream, huh? you all have that. When we fly. So you can, if, if you stop doing, doing this dream, it's because you don't program yourself to dream. Me, I love flying dream. So around seven or eight, I meditate on flying and sex. I visualize beautiful girls. And during the night, I dream of beautiful girls. I love it. You program your night with uh, what you think or feel in the two hours before sleeping. If you watch the news on TV, you will have nightmares. <laughs> if you watch a horror movie, you will have nightmares. <laughs> you create it. <laughs> and if you see beautiful things, visualize beautiful things, you will have beautiful dreams. So these three meditations are the minimum. if possible. The goal is to become a, a Buddha, a Maitreya. Meditation state 24 hours a day. Now I'm talking to you. It's a meditation for me. When I talk to you, I am meditating. That's why yesterday Michio said, oh, why? Maitreya, he doesn't know what he will say. It's true. When I come on the stage, many people think, oh, Maitreya, prepare a long time his speech. Nothing. Just before coming, I was playing a computer game. Having fun. When I come, uh, my foot here, I don't know what I will say. Here, I don't know what I will say. Here, I don't know what I will say. Then I come in front of you, and I talk to my supraconsciousness. Talk. And it's not me speaking. It's the supraconsciousness. The supraconsciousness is connected to Elohim to infinity. It's not me talking, not the little man, the little mimizu, little warm I am. Through me, Elohim are talking. Infinity is talking. So I don't need to practice or to know what I will say. And sometimes I listen to the recording of my speech after I listen and say, wow. Because <laughs> when I say it, I don't know. It's coming, it's flowing. I say, wow, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a lack of humility. Because when I talk to you, I'm not thinking at all. I don't know what I'm telling you. I'm not aware of it. It's coming. And you feel it. You feel it. That's why you are so happy and so excited. It's not a little Mimizu speaking. 
It's Elohim. I'm just a tool. And me, when I talk, the little Mimizu just can say one thing. I love you. <laughs>